guys, today we're setting up and reviewing a projector. So this particular one is from BenQ and it's their new short throw 4K projector, the TK700 STI. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So this projector is a DLP projector and BenQ say it's the world's first 4K HDR gaming projector that can output at a maximum resolution of 4K at 60 Hertz. It's got an input lag of 16 milliseconds, which is the lowest ever for 4K resolution. It has brightness ANSI lumens is 3000 on here with a contrast ratio of 10,000 to one. There's one five watt speaker and it's aimed purely at the gaming market and not at the home cinema market. We'll be testing it out on the next gen gaming console, so the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, but we'll also look at how it performs with the home cinema experience. In the packaging, you get a quick start guide, a support card, and a document with regulatory statements in there. A big thank you to whokeys.com for sponsoring this video. So you get your new PC and you're looking for a Windows 10 key, the official Microsoft Windows 10 Pro will set you back at 219 pounds. So by choosing to get it from whokeys.com, you can still get an official Microsoft key. So to get this, simply click the buy it now and sign up to the whokeys.com website. Once you've signed up, hit the buy now and they've given me a special discount code. So if you type in GEE2, that will give you another 20% off this product. Price. So in this case, that will drop the price to just £10.99. Once you buy it, you get the code via their portal. And now coming over to my Windows 10 PC, you can see Windows is not activated. Click change product key and enter the product key provided by WhoKeys. Click next, activate Windows, and that's it. You're done. Windows is activated. You get a power cable. The length of the cable is 180 centimeters, has a good build quality on there, and the connectors, what you'd use on a PC. You get a remote and some batteries, and it's a smart remote, and you can use Google Assistant on here. You get an Android TV stick coming onto the projector. Dimensions wise, the projector comes in at 312 millimeters, 110 millimeters tall, and 246 millimeters deep. Weighs 3.1 kilograms. There's no cover on the front of the lens of the projector. You can see they're branding at the side some vents and the infrared pickup point. Vent on this side, large vent on the other side. At the top, you've got the adjustment and settings options. So first of all, we've got the focus option, zoom, and down here, power, selection options. You've got source, eco, blank, back, menu, and mode. Then you've got some LED indicators coming along on the side and they're branding BenQ going across. At the back, you've got the power connection, two HDMIs, an RS-232, audio out, which is a 3.5 millimeter connector, and one USB connection point. And you can see the power output on this is 1.5 amps. You've got an area here, and this is where the Android TV stick can be stored away. So it's just a matter of opening this up and placing it inside. I'll show that in a moment. Underneath, you've got two mounting points, so M4, eight millimeter screws here. And then you've got adjustment points in three locations, so you can get the height adjustment with that. Build quality is good. All matte finish all the way around, obviously white in all these areas, except the front where you've got this darker color. The Android TV stick comes with regulatory statements and a quick start guide. And if we look in the quick start guide, you can get the specification for the device. You can see the CPU is an AM Logic S905Y2 Quad A53, and the GPU is a Mali G31 MP2. Two gig of RAM on there and 16 gig ROM. And connectivity is both 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Has Bluetooth on there and Dolby Audio. The TV stick is very compact in size, taking the cover off here. You've got the HDMI connector and at the side looks like the power point there. So you've got a point where you'd put in the micro USB connection point and then looking around, there's nothing else. So let's get this installed. At the back of the projector, there's a screw just over here. Let me remove that. The cover's removed by pulling sideways and that reveals this area. Now we just plug in the micro SD connection point and then push into the HDMI connector there. Place the cover back on so there's slots here. It's just placed into position and just gently push across and then place the screw back into position. I've plugged everything in. Let's test out sound levels from here. So my sound levels meters at the side, so let's power it on. About 47 decibels from here. So I've turned on the projector 
and this is what we're initially presented with. And the projector has a short throw projection. So from a distance of 2.2 meters, you can get about 100 inches on here. So I'm at the moment, I'm 165 centimeters. I'm getting approximately 80 inches. And clarity wise, it looks very good. And this is what you're initially presented with. So if I zoom in a bit more, projector position. So you can have four different positions on here. So front, front ceiling, rear and rear ceiling. So let me go through the setup briefly. So we'll confirm on this one. Language is English. And now we have 3D Keystone. And now what this is, this is the correction of the picture. So if the projector's at a bit of an angle, so if I zoom out and lift the projector up, you see it tries to straighten out the image now. So if I go down, there you go. So automatically done by the system. I don't need to press any buttons to do that. Okay, to this. Next we have game setting and game mode is currently off. And if I turn that on, you've got FPS for first person shooter. Then we've got RPG for role playing game and SPG for sports. So we'll put it on first person shooter. Fast mode below that and it's currently low. You can move that to high. Confirm to this, and now it wants to pair the remote with the Android TV device. If I hold on to OK on the remote, pairing successful. Now we just need to quickly go through the setup of the Android TV stick. So let me quickly go through that. Now I've started up my PlayStation 5, and this is the picture quality we're getting from it. It looks very good, and I've blanked out all the blinds in the room just to give you an idea what it's like when it's completely dark. And looking in the projector menu options, First of all, picture mode, I've set it to HDR 10, and then game mode, if we flip that over, if we go to FPS, for instance, give it a moment, and it takes a little while to flip between the different ones. And then if you see it's on FPS, then if I go back, you can see it goes to HDR game mode. So it comes out of HDR 10. Now looking in HDR brightness, got it to the maximum if I take it down just to show that's the levels you're getting from here. So good, initial impressions, picture quality is really good on here and looking in information, you can see at the top detected resolution 2160p and 60 hertz, meaning you've got 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, if I turn the lights on in the room, you can see the picture gets washed out a bit. No surprise, obviously that's what's gonna happen. Projectors for uh, environment where it's completely dark. But interestingly enough, you can see picture quality is still very good on here. Even looking around the edges, clarity is very good on here. Now I've opened the blinds in the room. We've got daylight coming through. So if I turn the camera briefly just to show, you can see very light outside. You can see for yourself, color quality on here is still very good. It's a little bit washed out, no surprise. Obviously with a projector, that's what's to expect, but still clarity with daylight in the room is very good on here. Now I've moved the projector to project onto the largest wall I've got in my studio. And this is giving about 152 inches and it's about four meters away. So if I look down, you can see the projectors just over there. Picture clarity is even at this distance, very good. You can see literally corner to corner, coverage is good. And just to highlight the area over here, that's the blind in the room and the rest is just a normal white wall. So I haven't got anything special in terms of a projection screen or anything like that. That's just on a standard blackout blind. And if I come in close, see the quality for yourself. Very good, clarity is extremely good on here. Now coming back, see for yourself, very impressive. Now coming back in, just to show the fact that is a blind, you can see straight out of there. So impressed, you get a massive area on this and obviously gives you more of an immersive feel when you're gaming. Let's test out the sound levels from the speaker. So there's one speaker on the left hand side, five watt speaker, and I've put the volume on the device to maximum. And let's play some music from this. So 84 decibels at maximum, no distortion from the speaker at all. Quality seemed reasonable, nothing amazing I'd say, but not surprising, most projector speakers are just like this. 
When I'm gaming, my preference is really to use some headphones. There's nothing wrong with using the speaker on here, but you'd get a more immersive feel with headphones on. Now, you could hook this device up to an amplifier via the 3.5 mil connector on the back of this, but it's a shame it didn't have an optical connection on there too. Now for my next test, what I've done, I've connected my Xbox Series X to the projector and my PlayStation 5 to my LG OLED C9 TV, just to give a comparison. I know it's not a good comparison, but just gives you an idea to expect in terms of differences between a projector and an OLED. Obviously my OLED's giving out an output of 120 frames per second, whereas the projector's giving 60 frames per second. While I'm standing here watching it, I don't think the camera can give it the full justice, but the projector picture quality is very good on there. And really, in terms of immersive feel, the larger screen you'd get from a projector is really impressive. Now, let me turn the lights on with both of them running. You can see now the projector picture is a little bit more washed out, where the OLED TV is much clearer consistently. The contrast is much better on the OLED. Now, if I turn the lights off again, you can see for yourself. Color levels and brightness levels, obviously on the OLED will be better, but on the projector, you're still seeing really good levels from there. Picture quality is very clear and color levels very good from there. Again, it's not a good comparison like I've said, but it does give you a good idea in terms of differences. And I hope the camera can give it the justice it really deserves. Let's jump into the hot seat and do some gaming now. So we've got Dirt 5 on the Xbox Series X here and with the projector at this distance, we're getting about 140 inch display. Gameplay on the projector is absolutely stunning. With a big screen experience, really gives an immersive feel and takes the racing experience to another level. Here, I'm playing with the Logitech G923 racing wheel and you can see the projector covers literally the whole wall. Doesn't compare even the slightest with playing on the TV. Obviously, with a TV, you've got a much smaller picture coming off there. So immersion wise, absolutely amazing. Responsiveness doesn't seem too bad. I know the lag time is 16 milliseconds, but doesn't affect playability for the general gamer in any way. I've tested gaming with both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Across both the consoles, I've played Dirt 5, Need for Speed Heat, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Watchdog Legion, Spider-Man, and Gran Turismo Sport. And across the different genres, gameplay is great. And I didn't notice any major lag. And with gameplay covering an entire wall, gaming really does feel next level. But obviously you're going to need a clear wall or a projector screen to project onto, together with enough space to project a large image to make the most of this. My camera really doesn't give it the full credit it deserves as the picture quality on there is stunning. Now for those of you out there who are hardcore PC gamers, you may not be so keen on the response time at 16 milliseconds as a gaming monitor would give you one millisecond and general monitor about four milliseconds. But if you switched over to 1080p, you can potentially game at 240 hertz with a response time of 4.2, which is pretty good for a projector. Playing a YouTube video via the Android TV stick in here, performance is fine, clarity wise it's very good as well. And even if I come out of this, go to the home screen again, navigating around performance feels good, there's no real sluggishness to it. And going into apps and then Google Play, it's in the Play Store you can see the sort of things available to install on here. And if I come down, you could even put on some basic games. You couldn't put anything too challenging. Obviously it's not super fast device in any way, but you could play simple games from this. And as it has Bluetooth, you can pair up a Bluetooth controller if you wanted to. So it's nice, it comes with this. So you've got some added functionality. So general streaming services are fine on this. Even playing a movie is generally okay on here. It's not too bad. I know it's aimed at gaming, but you could say it is dual purpose. You can do other things. You're not limited to just doing gaming on there. Now I've got a Synology NAS server and on there I've got a DNLA service running on there, providing access to my movies and music. So I've installed a client on the Android TV stick. You can see it there, DLNA channels. And if I go in there, 
you can access it. So quite useful to be able to do this. Now, if I come over to video, come all the way across, video samples, I've got a 4K video here. And just to show what happens if you try and play that. Now, it would have been nice if the device actually had an ethernet connection port so you can get faster connectivity. And you can see for yourself, it does struggle to start something up. I've tried lower resolution files and that seems to work fine, but it's just the 4K ones. If you had to stream a large file across there, it can struggle. And now just to show the performance of streaming a normal movie, this is just 1080p. There you go. So it doesn't struggle with that. 1080p is fine, but if you had a large 4K file, it's gonna struggle. The remote has a good feel to it. Buttons are nice and responsive. You don't have to point it directly at the projector, which is nice. Looking in close, you can see it's got a Prime Video. So if you've got a subscription to Prime Video, you can access services directly from this. And then you've got Google Assistant button there. So pressing that single time, you can ask Google for information. So if I press that, what's the weather like in New York today? Today's forecast for New York is 64 degrees and cloudy. And there you go, how cool is that? If I come back from there, and you've got the standard Android apps on here, and you've got access to the Play Store as well if you wanted to install any more. Now, looking in the corner here, you've got projector menu. So if I press that, and that's where you can access the specific projector-related options available on there. So you can change the picture mode, sound mode, light source mode. So coming in there, I come across eco, smart eco, lamp save and normal. We're gonna leave it on normal for our testing, going back. Then you've got 3D Keystone, we've already gone through that. Coming on to game settings, you can amend them here. And then you've got HDR brightness, which I can't get into, obviously the source I've got, which is the Android device, isn't allowing me to do that. And then you've got information. Over here, you're getting the detected resolution, and that's 2160p and 60 hertz. So in summary, a really impressive projector aimed at the gaming market and it delivers the whole gaming experience really well. In terms of negatives, it's a shame it can't deliver 4K at 120 frames per second as that would have nailed it for the next gen gaming consoles. But even at 4K 60 frames per second, it doesn't disappoint. It's also a shame the projector doesn't have an optical audio output. Then you could have connected it to a surround sound amplifier. I know it's not aimed at the cinematic experience, but this would have made it a great multifunctional projector. It's great it comes with an Android TV stick, but I would have liked a wired connection on there just to get a faster network connection. Performance with lots of light in the room is not bad, but for the best experience, you'd wanna have the room completely dark. If you compared it to an OLED TV, it can't compete with the contrast and clarity given by it. But if you're buying a projector, you're aiming for the big screen experience. And with this one, you won't be disappointed. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this particular projector. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards. There'll be a playlist with more projector reviews hope you can smash that like button as it does really help me out thanks for viewing and see you in the next one